SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Martin Richardson. Um, uh, we're here at the uh, College of Optics and Photonics at the University of Central Florida. And uh, I also serve as the uh, director of the new Towns Laser Institute that was created here some uh, three years ago. Um, I've been here in Florida for nigh on 20 years now. Um, obviously, don't speak with a Floridan accent. Uh, I was educated at Imperial College in, in London many years ago, um, right at the beginning of the laser age. I was I had the good fortune to spend an hour one afternoon with Professor Towns uh, in his office at Berkeley. He hadn't long been there after moving from, from MIT. Uh, and what I found so uh, gracious in him at that time was his willingness to, to sit there and talk lasers and science to someone who he really had never known before, um, uh, who was just starting out on a career, as it turns out, a career in lasers. Um, and to, to uh, give me a sense of, uh, of uh, how big science was and the benefits there could be to mankind and the like. This bigger glorif glorified picture, if you might like, the sense. And I never forgotten that. <clears throat> so f for this reason, it's been uh, extremely um, pleasant for me to have input into creating of a new laser institute um, that he's graciously agreed to have his name associated with. A laser institute that I hope will become the predominant uh, academic uh, institute in lasers in the country and worthy of his name behind it. What you see here is an illustration of one of the uh, pro uh, projects that we have here in the Towns Laser Institute. Uh, this is, uh, although it looks uh, very complicated, this is really the gist of the next generation of ultra-short uh, laser systems. This is, this is uh, Michael Hemmer, who is uh, the architect of this laser system, has been working on it for his uh, graduate degree uh, for the last few years. He's not far now from, from finishing. Um, and has, um, has uh, built um, most of this, uh, this complete lasers, built and designed most of this, uh, this laser system. So it sh shoots out a laser pulse that's only four or five femtoseconds in duration, which gets amplified up to the multi millijoule level at the 10 to 20 kilohertz uh, repetition rate regime. So uh, a laser system that uh, will be the successor of the currently commercial uh, Thai Sapphire based uh, uh, high intensity laser systems. But this is another example of uh, how we bring lasers uh, to have uh, impact uh, economically. Uh, this facility is our principal facility for making EUV light uh, using laser-produced plasmas. Two of the graduate students currently working on this program are uh, Vani Kamtapasad, uh, who's working on the spectroscopy of these light sources, and Omar Rodriguez, uh, who is working on the lasers that are used uh, to illuminate these sources here. Here we are making laser-produced plasmas at a high repetition rate inside this uh, vacuum vessel. The laser it comes in from the right-hand side here, and it's close by uh, Omar here. This uh, laser light is not on, so nobody has to wear the goggles at the moment. Um, but it comes into this chamber. In fact, two beams will come into this chamber and illuminates droplets, high-speed droplets, liquid aerosol droplets, uh, in, uh, in the center of the chamber here. And uh, you can see some green light in the, in the chamber. Uh, on the video screen here, you see the formation of these droplets. 
These are droplets about uh, 30 microns or so in diameter, uh, having multi-constituent chemical constituency, including the metal tin. The metal tin. And we have found, uh, after much experimentation, that uh, tin is the best material to produce laser plasmas, specifically laser plasmas that produce EUV emission at 13.5 nanometers. This is a very important wavelength for, believe it or not, the chip industry. Since chip manufacturer, the next generation of chip manufacturer is most likely to be EUV lithography using light sources like this um, for um, printing computer chips, the next generation of computer chips, going down to uh, minimum feature sizes beyond 22 nanometers in scale. Today, in this period of time, I see more excitement in the laser field and more potential for the future of lasers than perhaps at any time in the last 50 years. I think we are rapidly moving towards thinking of lasers as rather than complicated uh, multi-component devices to being uh, monoblock uh, light engines of the future.